We are reading the Gospel of Mark. We are in the events that surround the cross. But I want us to pause for just a moment and ask a little bit about the author. Who was this Mark? In other places in the Bible, he's also called John Mark. If you look at his background, he has really, he has a really good spiritual genealogy. He was there at the very beginning. Church history tells us that it was in Mark's house that Jesus had the final supper with his disciples. It was in Mark's upper room that Jesus washed the disciples' feet, and from there he left to go to Gethsemane to pray. Also, church tradition tells us that it was in Mark's upper room, that very same room, where so many people were gathered together praying when the Holy Spirit came in Acts chapter 2. The New Testament church was birthed, you might say, in Mark's house. He was at the very inception of the church. Well, Mark was also a partner of some of the most significant people in the early church, Barnabas was an early leader in the church and mentor to the Apostle Paul. And with Barnabas and the Apostle Paul, Mark had gone on missionary journeys. Well, in the middle of it, Mark got a little bit uncomfortable, apparently, got a little bit homesick, and went back to Jerusalem. But nonetheless, he got to accompany Barnabas and Paul. Later on, when Barnabas wanted to take John Mark on again, The Apostle Paul said no, but eventually the Apostle Paul also said yes. Toward the end of his life, the Apostle Paul called Mark to himself and said, he is useful to me. Apparently by then, Mark had uh, become, had redeemed his reputation by the grace of God, and the Apostle Paul just relished and longed for his company and his help. Not only was he a great help to the Apostle Paul, but he was also a great help to the Apostle Peter, one of the original twelve, <laughs> and quite arguably the leader of the original twelve, the Apostle Peter. He was his right-hand man, church tradition tells us. So even though Mark is not an apostle per se, he certainly has the spiritual pedigree to be used by God to write one of the Gospels. For that matter, Luke was also not an apostle. He had access to the Apostle Paul, but Luke was not also. Luke also wrote one of the the Gospels, right? Okay, so Mark was a right-hand person to uh, the Apostle Peter. And if that's so, look at what the Apostle Peter says just before he dies. Peter, 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 15, he says this, And I will make every effort so that after my departure slash death, you may be able at any time to recall these things. How are you going to be able to recall these things? By writing them down. Writing them down. And so, church tradition and many scholars believe that what was written down was Mark's gospel. Mark took the teaching of the apostle Peter and wrote them down in his gospel. Make sense? All of this brings us to our text, which is Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14, verse 51. Intriguing. Many people wonder, there's there's a verse here, passage here, that just seems completely out of place. You'll see what I mean. When Jesus is being arrested, the soldiers grab a hold of another person. But look at what happens. Verse 51, And a young man followed him, Jesus, with nothing but a linen cloth about his body, and they seized him. But he left the linen cloth and went away naked. What's that? That's what what was that? It's kind of embarrassing too. Of course, he didn't include the guy's name, but that's kind of embarrassing to put in this detail of a young man who runs away from the scene naked, having been at the scene with only a linen cloth about his body. 
church tradition, and many scholars tell us that more than likely this is a young Mark. Mark. The whole context supports it. One, it is understandable that the author would in humility, and it's an expression of humility, not put his name in his gospel. Same thing with the gospel of John. John describes himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved, right? But his name is never mentioned as the one who wrote the gospel of John. In much the same way, Mark's name is not mentioned as the author of this book, but he puts himself in there. A lot like how the directors put themselves in the, the movie for a cameo. In a, very, in a very similar sense, the author of the book of Mark puts himself in a cameo. And what is all this about just a linen cloth about his body? It sounds reasonable that as the disciples and Jesus were leaving his house, he would throw on a linen cloth and go follow. All right. So I, I think that's a very worthwhile tradition. I'm not going to die on that mountain. If you're going to tell me that that wasn't Mark, okay, you can have it your way. You're, you're entitled to your opinion. But I think that's a good case. There is a good case to be made that this out-of-place man following after Jesus, running away naked, is most likely Mark. That detail of an eyewitness account. And if that's true, isn't that in character? of Mark, a fervent heart. Maybe that's a picture of himself. Remember, he was the one that followed after Paul and Barnabas and deserted them at one point. How much more precisely could it be, could that whole thing metaphorically be described as a person who followed Jesus, who loved Jesus and followed him? And yet, when push came to shove, ran away in shame. I love it. This is what happened at Jesus' arrest. This is what happened when push came to shove, when things got difficult with Barnabas and Paul. But ultimately, God worked in Mark's life in such a way that he was useful to the apostle Paul at the end of Paul's life and used by God to write this gospel. There's a word of hope that God gives to you and to me who have made such commitments to the Lord again and again and again and again and again and again have fallen back, have gone back on our promises. Some of you may have said that you would do this, that, and the other for the Lord, and yet you haven't. Your life has taken a different path, and you wonder if you will ever be really useful to the Lord at all. I challenge you. I don't know what your path will be look like. Maybe the Lord will take you back to your prior commitment, whatever that was. Or maybe he will lead you into a brand new one. I don't know. But it begins with recommitment to the Lord's cause. Do not give up on yourself. It's not like God to give up on you. He said he will not. I believe he won't. Lean into him. Trust in him. And just as... Failures like Mark can be used magnificently for his kingdom and his glory. So the Lord desires to use you and to use people like me. What a blessing. What a privilege to know the heart of God that does not give up on us when everybody in the world, including ourselves, we would give up on ourselves. Let's trust in him. Recommit our lives to him. Praise God for examples like of redemption like Mark, like Paul, like David, like Abraham, and like so many other people that God has used all throughout his word. It's, it's like God to redeem broken lives like yours and mine. Isn't that the gospel? Let's pray. Thank you for the testimony of lives like Mark. Thank you for placing him right here, just standing out so vividly against this background. And Lord, like Mark fled away that day in shame and nakedness, when we could have stood for you, many of us have not. 
And many of us, no, all of us, have lost so many opportunities to be a good witness and to represent well. And yet, you give us opportunity upon opportunity, and again, you give give us another opportunity. Help us, Lord God, not to lose this opportunity, but to take it, to milk it, and leverage every gift you have given us for a deeper dedication and fuller expression of the dedication and the beauty the beautiful gift of King Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Who am I that the Lord of all the earth would care to know Because